What's up guys, welcome back to The Art Box. Today we're gonna be customizing a backpack I got from Five and Below. I'm excited to show you guys how it turned out. So let's get started. So step one of this thing is to paint the background. I'm gonna use some spray paint and people please don't forget to use your mask. I started out with this True Blue spray paint. It's gloss, flat paint is definitely gonna be the best. You guys will find out why later. And I just lightly started to spritz over the side of the backpack. And to give it more of a gradient effect, I thought it'd be cool to go in with this Island Blue light spray paint. But this can had other ideas. A little bit came out, but it wasn't enough. What a waste. What a waste. But I wasn't giving up just yet because I've done this before. So I took the nozzle off the red and thought I can maybe just transplant it on top of the blue spray paint. Again, done this millions of times, but that still wasn't the case. Something was definitely wrong with Mr. Blue. So when being an artist, you have to be resourceful. I decided to go ahead and lay down a layer of white spray paint and then went back over that very lightly with the true blue spray paint and it gave me the exact color I wanted. Although I'm still bummed out that I have a whole can of that Island Splash that I just can't use. But anyway, moving on from that, it's time to get artistic. I put some of the white spray paint inside of this cap to give me that splatter effect and I also did the same with the red. And then just start randomly throwing that on your surface. And this is how it turned out. Not too bad. So I grabbed my pencil and started to sketch out a design that you can't see, but I went over those outlines with the Sharpie marker to better see the layout and also so you guys wouldn't be left in the dark. Now to see what this glass is all about. After reading the instructions, the most I gather from this is that you're supposed to heat seal it between dries and you can also mix this with your acrylic paint to make it much, much fluid and thinner when you're laying down your layers. Again, this is mostly for surfaces of fabric, like if you're gonna be painting this backpack, shirts or shoes, maybe even a hat. So I thought I'd go ahead and give it a try for this video. I will say it definitely made my acrylic paint a lot smoother and easier to work with. Once I got the first layer down, I locked it in by sealing it with this heat gun. And then kept building up more layers until I got the look I was going for. I don't know what the Scream franchise would be without Nev Campbell, and it sucks to hear that she might not be coming back for any of the future projects due to money issues, but I don't blame her. She is to Scream what Jamie Lee Curtis is to the Halloween franchise. You just gotta have them in there. I do hope whatever issues they have, they figure it out before the next movie come out because I would really like to see her back in that role. But hey, fingers crossed, right? Man, I remember when the first Scream came out and how much of a big deal it was. It was everywhere. It was the first time I ever saw them take a murder mystery and mix it with a slasher movie. It was just good from start to finish. Everyone trying to guess who the killer was out of all the people in the cast. And another thing I kind of liked about it, which was pretty sad for this guy, he got beat up a lot. So he wasn't like one of these supernatural people like Michael Myers or Jason that could take bullets and just keep coming. Or you couldn't touch him because he was in your dream like Freddy Krueger. No, they really whooped up on Ghostface every chance they got. No! And on top of that, the mask. You can't forget that iconic ghost face mask. Scream was just that movie back when it came out. But enough about them, let's talk about this. It feels really good to be painted in the traditional sense again. And what I mean by that is I really enjoy the reverse style glass paintings that I've done in a few past videos. But just being able to build up your paint in a more traditional style is just something I miss. Plus I feel I'm just able to be more free and expressive doing it this way. But that's not to say that I don't like the glass paintings and that I won't be doing more. I use these different variations of the grays, blues, and even the whites to play off the colors of the background. Almost as though it's casting a light source over ghost face. Not gonna lie, it is a little challenging painting on these not so flat surfaces, but I made it work. Now Ghostface looks good, but he's not quite done. At least not yet. There's something he's missing. He wouldn't be that killer that we know and love without a little blood. So I'm just mixing some of that red acrylic paint with that goth medium to give our friendly neighborhood slasher friend here his gory look and not to forget to seal it in with the heat gun. So this part here was pretty funny. I thought I was being really clever making this stencil. It spelled out the word scream. And if you guys look at it real closely, you can see that this has a big problem. Nevertheless, I didn't catch on to it and I went ahead and just painted this as usual. <laughs> I thought I was really creating something special. I was using the blue as an accent color to highlight all the letters, you know, to really try to bring in the background. Then I used this red acrylic paint to try to do like a blood dripping effect on each of the letters, <laughs> all the while not knowing that this was spelled wrong. 
You know the crazy part about it is I even looked it up before I made the stencil and I still got it wrong. Cuckoo. I mean, if you're from the south of the country, you can say it's scream and not scream. But uh, yeah, that's not right. Dyslexic. Anyway, the bottom of this looked a little too plain. So I used the red spray paint to liven it up a bit. Using that same paint splatter technique that we artists just can't live without for some reason. And what do you know? I was able to get just a little bit of that light blue to finally work for me. The red glossy spray paint made it sticky to the touch. That's why you're gonna always want to use flat spray paint. Covering it with the gawk heat sealer helped a little bit, but not much. And I thought it was done, but that's when I noticed this is not spelled correctly. I'm a complete idiot and a little dyslexic, actually a lot dyslexic. Look at this. This is not how you spell screen. This, so I got some acetone here. This is pretty much a nail polish move from the Dollar Tree. And it's cotton swab. So we're gonna see if we can actually save this backpack. I'm gonna go in real lightly and see if I can even affect the area. And to my surprise, it's actually coming off. Just like an eraser. Perfect. So after getting hooked on phonics, I went in with my pencil to sketch out each letter, making sure that each one had enough space. Threw down a couple layers of white paint, drizzled each letter in acrylic red blood, used a slight bit of gray to make sure the tones matched the other layers, and this is what I got. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? So this is the finished backpack guys of Ghostface from Scream. And now that it's actually spelled right, I can show this to you without feeling like an idiot. Comment below your favorite horror movie icon. And while you're at it, who do you think I should paint next? And speaking of customs, I think you should watch this one next. That should hold you over to next week till I return with a brand new video. Oh, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe. See you next week. You never told me your name. Why do you want to know my name?